Hi everyone, this is Module 9, Case Problem 4, Canyon Properties. And right off the bat, I'm going to save this just as you guys should all be doing, just so that um, I don't accidentally write over it. There are a few things initially in this assignment that I just would not do that, um, well, I just think they're poorly written instructions, as usual. So let's see here. Okay, MM, revised... Canyon prop. I'm just going to put that. That's fine. And I'm saving it in my Sierra College. It's different than yours. But anyway, okay. So here we go. There are some things that I recommend that you change. And we're just going to go off the grid right away. And I always take the color off. As you know by now, you don't have to. You may do what you choose. Actually, I've been remiss. In case I didn't show you this before, if you hold down Shift and select the end and then you select this and you go no fill and black text you can change all of your pages at one time yay okay moving on in case I have ultimately been remiss in this as well when you have all your sheets selected and you have selected my favorite little triangle up here you can also unmerge cells for all your sheets that should be again one of your regular habits when opening a document as you will notice when you scroll through these, all of them have the, hen the heading Canyon Properties. The only reason I'm not going to recommend you change that is when you get down here to Financial Statements and Depreciation, they're really long um, landscape type forms and your heading's just going to not match anyway. I might actually leave it to the left. As you can see, I changed this uh, documentation sheet. I take the damn lines out because uh, they bug me. And uh, again, all subjective. Here we go. So on step three, um, actually, yeah, it says three. A reference error appears in the, through the workbook um, if in the financial statement worksheet. So if we look here, okay, so there is a reference error. Here's the deal. There's a reference error because there is nothing in the cell depreciation C10. It's all reference errors. So let's just skip that, and we'll make a note and revisit it should we need to. I don't think we need to. So let's just skip three and four and move on to step five. Now step five, I'm going to insert something here and I believe that you need to name cells before you go any further. Okay, so now I pretty much have it the way I want it. I would take all of these lines off. I hate them, but you guys should know that by now. Again, I think professionally in any office situation, I've already taken them off there, in any office situation I don't know about here. I'm going to leave these because I'm not sure how I feel about those yet, whether we need them. Probably not, but I'm going to leave them for now. Okay, so now we are on step 5A, but we have, oh, you should have named cells. When you pull down your little name box, if you've named the cells as I have, you should have stuff like this. Again, there's no rhyme or reason, no rules to what you name things as long as it's clear. Um, there are, so when you click in there, years to hold, annual inflation. Ideally, if you were to get hit by a bus tomorrow, someone could sit in your seat and know what the heck your form was supposed to show. Now, in things like future value and present value, PV and FV are common abbreviations, so I stuck with those. But ideally, like approved percentage rate if you're buying a car would be APR, those kinds of things. Uh, then I did... I named a couple of cells on the depreciation sheet. I named salvage value and salvage years. I'm not sure that we're going to need them, but it is a good habit to get into because those things, while the values may change, what they represent will possibly be used in formulas. So now um, to instruction 5A. In cell B5 on home info, otherwise known as years to hold, this is also going to help you learn the formulas much better. As I said from the beginning, enter 10. Okay, great, so we enter 10, and then in B6, we're going to enter 3.7, so that's annual inflation. Again, easier to remember when you're doing formulas. Property tax rate is 2.1. Rental income tax rate is 29.5. Again, um, easier to use in formulas when you know what they represent. B7, B8 really doesn't mean a damn thing. B938.3, so tax rate on sale. That all makes sense to me. Okay, um, 
Perfect. So now we're on the second page of the assignment. Step six. And actually, I'm going to stop the recording here.